Are you ready to transform your normal e-commerce business into one that experiences exponential growth year after year using online advertising? If so, this show is for you. Me and my guests will show you how you too can grow your e-commerce business to seven or even eight figures so you can go on more luxurious vacations, spoil yourself and your family, say yes to more opportunities and become financially free so you never have to worry about money again. Welcome to the e-commerce performance marketing show. Hey, how's it going guys? Josh Marzen here, host of the Ecom Performance Marketing Show. The show is still going, even with the coronavirus going on right now. And I have an incredible guest for you. I have Justin Brooke of Ad Skills. Uh, Justin is very well known, very well respected in the digital marketing space. He's one of the best at what he does, which is teaching people how to run successful ad campaigns through his various courses and programs. Uh, Justin also has a wealth of experience that he's going to share with us today. When it comes to e-commerce, so I'm really excited to have him here on the show. Uh, Justin, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I know I've been really trying to get you on the show for quite some time, and I know we've been trying to coordinate for quite some time as well. So, you know, I'm truly honored to have you here on the show today, and, you know, you know thank you so much for, you know, committing some time today for this interview. Not a problem, man. I hope I can answer all your questions. <laughs> Well, I'm confident you can. Um, well, for, before we like dive in, before we get started, you know, I'd love for the audience to kind of get to know you a little bit. Uh, so if you could tell maybe the audience about how you got started, you know, um, what are some of the challenges that you overcame to get to where you're at right now and what you're doing right now as well? Sure. So I got started um, technically 2005, but I didn't make any money until 2007. 2007 is when I interned with Russell Brunson out in Idaho. Everybody knows him now, ClickFunnels. This was long before ClickFunnels. He still had the dot-com secrets thing going. But anyways, I went and interned with him, and my job as an intern was to study his quarter-million-dollar closet full of courses, books, DVDs, seminar footage, Everything you could possibly want to know. I mean, Jay Abraham, Dan Kennedy, Joel Polish, Chet Holmes, everybody was in there. Tony Robbins. And um, for whatever reason, the thing that really jumped out at me was paid traffic. You know, I, I, I had a little website. I was working you know, on it, trying to make things work. And there was this course in there about AdWords. And, you know, it really changed my mind on advertising is until this moment advertising was always something very expensive uh very like elite you know like you had to get magazine ads or tv ads or billboard ads and and uh and, but then here's this course telling me i can like pay a dollar per click or back then it was not a dollar per click. I mean, it was like yeah, ten cents per click. I didn't, I didn't get in on the five cent clicks. I wasn't that early, but it was still about ten, ten cent, twenty cent clicks. So that changed the game for me. It was like, wow, I can, you know, for ten bucks, I can, I can advertise from my home. Yeah. You know, right. I think, I think even today, people still kind of take that for granted of like how amazing that is. And that, you know, we didn't have that ability. In the, it was only like the last 10, 15 years that we had the ability to just buy advertising to any market all across the globe. If you got 20 bucks, you can, you can reach somebody. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big deal. And, and I think people underestimate it. So anyways, I take this course. Uh, I'm still broke. It was an unpaid internship. Uh, but I, I get the education of a lifetime out there with Russell Brunson and all those sports. That's mine. I, I go I go back home to Florida and I'm telling my girlfriend who's now my wife, I'm like, hey listen, I want to do this paid advertising stuff. She's like, well great, but we're still broke. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally I literally write her up a report, like a little ROI report of how I'm gonna spend the money, you know, the whole campaign, everything everything I learned. Show her what I learned. And we can't find no money. So I pay half the electric bill. I'm, I'm that confident that I pay half the electric bill and I put $60 in the AdWords. It was a pathetic $2 a day campaign. And it was one, one placement. You know, I was targeting one URL with one ad 
two dollars that you can't do much more with two dollars, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it worked, man. I, I ended up making, uh, let's see, it was a thirty-five dollar course. Yeah, I made a hundred and fifty bucks the first month. I paid the electric bill, put the money back in, and, and I doubled my money every month for eleven months. I had a six-figure business. It was paid traffic. You know, it was it was AdWords. It was Google Ads. It changed yeah. my life, and so so I've been out here doing that ever since. You know, it's the thing that lets me eat red lobster instead of ramen noodles. You know, so I keep it going, and I try to I try to help other people as well. Yeah, yeah. And how, and how are you doing that these days? Like, I know you've got ad skills, but can you tell the audience a bit about what you're really focused on right now with your businesses? Yeah, so we got ad skills. We've got over 11,000 ad buyers inside. I stopped counting a while ago. It's probably like 13,000. Um, so we got ad skills. Um, it's not just me teaching all the courses. I teach uh, two of the master's level courses. And then, but I can't keep up with everything. You know, I tried to at one point. So we've got experts now, uh, ad skills students who have become rising stars in YouTube, in Facebook, in Google display, in Pinterest ads. And, you know, so we try to cover everything, at least everything that's, it's kind of mainstream. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. And we help people with all that. We got a certification. Um, and then we got a nice. we got an app we got an app coming out, but it's it's super early days. I don't want to talk about that. No, that's awesome. I mean, so, yeah, that's great. Thirteen thousand. So, so ad skills for those that are uninitiated that are new to e-commerce, like what is ad skills and who is it for? And you know, what can people expect if they were to become students within ad skills? So, ad skills is. Um, Still working on figuring out what we got to do to officially call ourselves a trade school, but we're much more than courses. Uh, we we have courses, and most people come because that's what they want. You know, they want to learn Google Ads, or they want to learn YouTube, or so they they come to us because they want to learn some kind of ad network. But then they realize, you know, we've got you know leads inside because we got a matchmaker program where businesses are contacting us because we have so many ad buyers. They're contacting us to hire agencies and employees. We've got a spotlight program where we put our students on our podcast to help them get like speaking gigs and to get featured and get clients. So we have so many different programs and employers network, uh, a certification. You know, we, we, okay. we, we, we do a lot to try and make sure this is much more than just courses. You know, I don't, I don't oh, feel yeah. my job's no. done until they're hired, not just certified, but until they're hired. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's like the right approach. I, I really uh, applaud that because that's really providing a lot of value and impact to a lot of people in the right way. It's not just selling courses, like you said. So that, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, and to the so ecom you, guys, yeah, so go ahead. You know, to the ecom guys, we have another side of it where it's not just like leads and you know, get your own clients, get hired. We have a, you know, there's a marketplace where you can hire people for your e-com business to help you set up tracking, uh, to help you run the ads. Or if you just want to put one of your employees through there instead, because you're the business owner, you shouldn't be doing all this stuff. Uh, we have that ability too. So we, we, we try to cater to both sides of the market. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, good deal. So when it comes to like e-commerce, um, you know, what are, some of the biggest successes you've had to date that you wouldn't mind sharing with the audience? Sure. Ecom. Um, you know, I consider supplements ecom. I, I like to build landing pages. You know, I, I tell my, I tell my customers if we're going to do cold traffic, we want to have a landing page and we're going to, you know, what I, what I do, the first thing I do is I interview them and I say, okay, what are your, Top three sellers. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's this, this, and that. All right. Well, why is this, you know, how much, how much is each of them selling? Okay. So then I find one is like really out ahead. And then I find, well, why do they buy this one? And I'm, I'm looking for that hot button one. Sometimes it's not always the number one seller. Sometimes it might be the number two seller, but it's got a really good hot button or a really good story 
uh, that we could talk about it. Like one of them was, uh, I think it's called colostrum. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, cow milk or some, you know, birth milk or <laughs> something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a supplement person, but anyways, it helps with recovery. And so I had done a lot of work in the muscle building industry, uh, for supplements. And I realized everybody was targeting the muscle building, right? Like the, the caffeine, pre-workouts, the, you know, the muscle building shakes, the protein shakes and all that. But I didn't, I didn't see a lot of people targeting the recovery and how important that was, you know? And so that's mm-hmm. what I mean. You know, I'm telling the story because I look for what's a little different, you know, how can we come at the market a little bit different from everybody else instead of just being another version of the same thing yeah and then uh so then we built them a landing page we told that story we started selling it and then what we do is we retarget to the store you know and so and then the other thing that they were doing is they were doing auto ship which Mm -hmm. auto ship is d is great for seo for social media a lot of internal marketing but with auto ship it's hard to make your money back because what most people are doing auto ship, let's say they charge $49 for the bottle, you know, let's go $69. Maybe you got some super wowzer pill and you can get away with charging $69. Even at, <laughs> even at $69, your cost to acquire the customer. Look, if you're paying 50 cents per click, which Today that's tough. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're if you're paying if you're really good at media buying and you're paying fifty cents per click, then uh, and you have a one percent standard one percent conversion rate, that means it's going to take you a hundred clicks to get one sale. That means it's fifty dollars for one sale. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if your product is forty nine dollars, you're losing money that first month. If you're $69, you made a little bit. So what I'm getting at is with auto ship and media buying, it's really tough. Sometimes you don't make your money until the third month and not everybody's got the accounting skills or the bank account to be able to kind of float that money for those right. that three months. And so right. what we did is we said, look, you could do your auto ship wherever you want. You know, go do that wherever. Uh, go do that somewhere else. Don't do that over here on the Patreon. So we built them a one three six offer, which is one bottle, three bottles, six bottles. Now I'm talking about supplements. You guys can kind of like take this data and, and you know apply it to your own thing. You know if you sell mugs or T-shirts, you know do a one three six offer. So a one three six offer means they're gonna buy. Uh, it's like good, better, best pricing. Okay. If you buy one bottle, it's going to be $69. If you buy three bottles, it's going to be $59 each. If you buy six bottles, it's going to be $49 each. You know, that's good, better, best pricing. But what it does is, you know, some people are going to buy one. Some people are going to buy six. Most people are going to buy three. So if you're charging $49, I just turned your sale from a $49 bottle for a hundred and forty nine dollar sale. Yep. Now you can, right there. Right. Now you can afford your cost, you know, your your cost per sale, your cost per customer, or whatever you call it. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so we were able to take them from uh, a seventy five dollar average order value to a two hundred and fifty dollar average order value. And now they're able to do, you know, now they're like they're not even worried about paid ads. They're doing magazines, they're doing Everything because they got the AOV, you know, the average order value yep. to be able to handle it. Yep. So, yep. No, that's, that's great. That's like that's my great. best e com case study. No, I mean, you know, that's a, a really powerful strategy and a very fairly simple to execute strategy, too, that can make a big impact to average order value, which, you know, is one of the key metrics that e commerce stores really have to optimize for, especially if they're using paid advertising to acquire customers. Because, you know, like you said at the beginning, uh, you know, most e-com businesses are bootstrapped and they don't have like the deep pockets to be able to acquire customers up front at a negative or even at a break even. And they can't, you know, they can't float that between that time and the time that they're actually going to see the ROI. So they need to boost that ROI right away early in the customer life cycle, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you're selling, if you're selling a little impulse buy thing, you know, I mean, I sell, I, I do books because I sell courses and training, so books, you know, are attract self learners. But um, if you're selling little stuff like that, then you know the metrics are a little bit different. But if you're selling anything in the fifty and up range, then you're, I'll tell you right now, I mean, I have five thousand plus ad campaigns. You, you're gonna need to be able to afford about a hundred dollar cost per acquisition and when you can mm-hmm. most people freak out when i say that and they don't want to believe me but i'm telling you when you can when you adjust your upsells and your sales funnel so that you can afford to spend a hundred dollars to acquire a buyer you will never have a traffic problem again because you'll be able to go to any ad network and you'll be able to acquire for 80 90 100 and you're, you're going to win the game that's that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts on a book a book strategy because, you know, you use a book, like you said, to lead people into ad skills. And uh, I know you kind of alluded to there being a different, slightly different strategy there. And if we're talking about supplements, you know, a lot of uh, supplement sellers are selling those types of products up front to get credibility, to get a customer at you know, more of a tripwire, you know, self-liquidating offer type price and type offer. Uh, do you have maybe some intel, some strategies, some tactics that you use in the past that have been proven and tested that allow businesses like that to be able to successfully use something like a book up front to be able to get customers on the back end? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of research on on book marketing, book sales, you know, going back through history. And there actually used to be something called a, a pamphleteer. Pamphlets here, like Three Musketeer. Okay. And, you know, it's surprising, but these things have literally changed the course of the world. The, the American Revolutionary War, uh, was started because of a little pamphlet. And so the reason why they did these is back in the day, you know, back in the old days, it wasn't very easy to print a book. They didn't have 48 hour books and Amazon FBA, FBA and all that stuff. And so if you wanted to get some information out, you either had to be really wealthy, you had to persuade a book printer. But then the problem was is the bad guys could come and get you, you know, and so you needed to be able to print something really quick. And so they use these little, these little booklets. You know, there's one called Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Uh, one of them, uh, started what's called the Great Awakening of Christianity. And that's, um, it's called Angry Sinner, something, you know, uh, like that. Um, I got it sitting behind me, but anyways, these little pamphlets. And so you don't have to write like a 200 page book. You can create a 30, you know, mine's 80 pages. Uh, but you can create a 20 to 80 page book and you can sell that or give it away for free and charge for shipping. These guys, they would charge a dollar. They would charge a quarter. It's back in the day, you know, so today yeah. you'd probably have to charge, you know, five, 10 bucks. But anyways, you, you acquire a customer for super cheap with this little piece of information. The one we're working on right now is called the highest paying job nobody knows about. So you get these little sexy titles and then you upsell them and and it's just great. It really helps you massively drop your acquisition cost and then easily increase your average order value. Yeah. It's all a math, it's all a math game, man. You you just, if you know the numbers, if you know the numbers, you can make paid traffic work. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I love how you came up with that hook. Uh, what was that hook again for the, uh, the reporter of the book that you just mentioned? It's it called was, uh, the, high, the Highest Paying Job Nobody Knows About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really, really good hook. Very simple. Um, and, and, you know, and it communicates the value up front, which is awesome. Uh, do you have like maybe processes you go through to come up with those hooks and even test those hooks before you even go out to the market? Yeah, I wish I did. And I've been looking for somebody who has. And, and every time somebody claims it, I'm like, oh, and now uh, they got it. There's, there is no, uh, the closest I've ever come is BuzzFeed makes their writers write 25 headlines for every article. Yep. 
And that's that's as close as I've come to like a recipe for coming up with good hooks. And for me, what I do is I just I just deep dive into the market. I really try to understand what's their fears, their frustrations, their do- their desires. You know, one question I ask myself is what would what superpower would they want to have? You know, and so like an e-com guy would probably want to have like the superpower of, you know, manufacturing any product he thinks of, you know, just overnight, you know, like if he thinks of something overnight, he's got it manufactured and ready to be shipped out, you know, because the the, the the Shopify thing's easy, right? I mean, anybody can plug in a Shopify store. Really, anybody knows how to set up a Facebook ad, but it's the sourcing of the product. It's getting it shipped. It's, you know, it's all those things. So that's what I try to do. I try to think of the superpower and I try to think of like interesting, what are different ways that I could say this? And so I got to thinking for me, how I came up with this title is, you know, every time I say media buyer, like I, when I said, if you go back and, and rewind the tape, um, I, I said, I have 11,000 ad buyers. And I've yep. kind of conditioned myself to say ad buyers because nobody knows what a media buyer is. You know, I, I yep. tell my family, you know, we, you know, I, I teach media buyers or I do media buying. They're like, what? What is that? You know, <laughs> however, if you think about it, it's very possible with a good campaign to make a million dollars with an ad campaign. You know, eh, you're going to have to get a little lucky. You're going to have to work at it, but it, it happens. You know, yeah, it's, for sure. it's super, super possible to make six figures with an ad campaign. And mm-hmm. so that's why we call it the highest paying job nobody knows about. Nobody knows media buying is a job. You know, nobody knows that Google needs media buyers or Uber needs media buyers or, you know, like yeah. um, a few of us in the know, we kind of know about that. But the general population, they don't know what that is. And so that's, yeah. you know, I, I started realizing like, oh, you know, this thing that annoys me that nobody knows what media buying is, maybe that's, that's actually something there. Like, oh, they make a lot of that. Okay, the highest paying job nobody knows about. So, yeah, that's how I, I mean, it's a huge job. That's a huge, uh, huge opportunity, you know, um, right now in the market, especially considering the current times, you know, being able to work from home, you know, buy ads from home as a freelancer agency, you know, whatever you want to call it. But, um, yeah, some, some things that we've done in the agency to test, you know, different hooks and things like that is we'll use, for example, like Facebook ads before we even make the offer just to test the actual hook and we'll drive people maybe to a piece of content um, and we'll have like 10 different hooks uh, that we're testing to see which hook gets the best click-through rates. That tells us that that's the most popular hook. Um, that's one thing we've done. Um, another thing we've done is, uh, this is this is learned from Ryan Levesque, Ask Method, um, where we'll do like a deep dive survey to an audience, especially right when we take on a new client, just to, just to understand more about that audience and how we're going to market to them and how we're going to succeed with our marketing campaigns with that specific client. And the last question of the survey is basically testing different offer hooks to see which offer hook like is the one that we should roll with, you know, based off of the, the survey feedback. Uh, th- those are two things that we've done to uh, to test hooks that worked well, really well. I just thought I would you know share that with the audience and also yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Well, cool. Well, um, I want to be respectful of your time, so I-, I know that we're getting close to the end here. So I'm going to go ahead and transition into uh, the last part of the interview here, which is uh, kind of a little fun bonus round to end things on a on a high note. So this bonus round is pretty simple, um, but here's the challenge. The challenge is, is that every question I ask you, you have to answer it with only one word. Oh, man. I, I, I hope my mind's in a good place. <laughs> well, uh, well, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what caused your biggest e-com success to date? Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's the first time someone said that, by the way. Um, and that should be said more often because math is so huge to what it is that we do. What advice do you have for other e-com business owners? Invest. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to let you kind of continue that a little bit, even though it's only one word. Invest in, like, what are you thinking there? So what everybody's scared to do, everybody wants to, like, put $500 in or $1,000 into an ad buy and then make their money back right away the first time. You know, just like you said, sometimes you have to run some Facebook ads with no profit goal, but just to find the hook. But the yep. thing is, you spend a thousand dollars and you find that dynamite hook. What's that worth? Right. You know, so that's worth, why I say could be worth a lot. In, yeah. In, invest. You know, be willing to put you know two thousand five grand in to really test things, and I man, it will pay you back millions of dollars. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I feel like too. You know, you just need to commit. You know, you can't just have like a one-time campaign. Um, you really have to be committed to using advertising on a consistent basis, you know, whether at, at, at minimum 90 days, three months, but, you know, even more so possibly. So this way you have time to really test and learn and, and you're really committed to, to figuring out advertising for your e-commerce company. I think that's so critical. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Got to be tested. Definitely, definitely. All right. Back to the one word answers. Uh, how would you describe yourself? Handsome. <laughs> awesome. Um, and what do you see in your future? Mountain living. That's two words, but two words. oh well. <laughs> oh well. We'll take it. We'll take it. All right. Well, uh, Justin, you know, how can people that are watching this episode, how can they reach out to you, learn more from you, uh, find out more about, you know, uh, ad skills and, you know, how you train media buyers or ad, ad buyers, I think is what you called it, you know, because I know it's more of a common term. Um, yeah, how can people reach out and uh, find out more and possibly even sign up? You know, where I usually point people to is just search ad skills on YouTube. We've got a bunch of videos there. And if you don't like that, then you're not going to like anything else, you know? So start okay. there. Uh, most people end up thinking it's pretty good stuff and then they, they want to come on and, and be a part of ad skills. So I like people to start there. Just search ad skills on YouTube, uh, search ad skills on Google. Um, while I'm a paid traffic guy, you know, we got the SEO game on lock too. So. But yeah, nice. start in YouTube. Start in YouTube, man. There's we got over a hundred videos there, really good stuff. And if you like that, come back. We got more. Awesome. Okay, sounds good. All right, guys, we'll go to YouTube. Search for Ad Skills. Search for Justin Brook. Uh, you'll definitely find lots of valuable content. Sounds like we've got over a hundred videos on YouTube, which is incredible. And check out Ad Skills. Uh, this way, you can add advertising as a skill to your repertoire so this way you can scale and grow your e-commerce business by learning from one of the best here, Justin Brook. Uh, Justin, thanks so, so much for being on the show. I greatly appreciate it and um, you know, good luck with everything with the coronavirus. Uh, take care of you and your family and you know, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. All right, yeah, no problem, man. I got plenty of toilet paper. Don't worry. <laughs> good. I'm glad you're prepared. <laughs> All right. All right, bye. Thank you for tuning in to the e-commerce performance marketing show. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment with a timestamp of your favorite part and share it with a friend. Until our next episode, here's to you and the success of your e-commerce business.